Welcome back. Recently, we introduced how to prove triangles congruent. And we said that congruent figures, in order to have congruent figures, that all the corresponding parts of those figures needed to be congruent. Well, we saw that in triangles as well. We said if all the corresponding parts are congruent, then we have congruent triangles. But as we just studied, the truth is, for triangles, we only need a particular corresponding part. So side, 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 angle, side, and angle, side, angle. That's all we really needed to prove that we have congruent triangles. However, the converse of this is true. It turns out that once we have congruent triangles, then it would logically follow that all the corresponding parts of those triangles would be congruent. So we don't need to prove the remaining corresponding parts. We know that once the triangles are congruent, then all the corresponding parts are congruent. So, Two triangles are congruent using only three parts, side, 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 angle, side, or angle, side, angle, then the remaining corresponding parts must be congruent. Well, what does that mean for us? Well, we are going to continue our proofs, our logic, beyond just proving the triangle congruent and we can prove the remaining parts by saying that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or CP, CPC. And this is a very common reason that we will use in proof and this will always always follow congruent triangles you cannot have cpcpc until you have congruent triangles and there you heard me say it cpcpc that is going to be a reason in proof and it's going to be a reason that follows previously established congruent triangles. Commit this to memory. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. CPCPC. Also in this section, there's an introduction to circles. We'll be using circles in our proofs as well, and some characteristics of circles. A circle is defined as all of the Fixed points that are a fixed distance away from the fixed point. Okay, so the circle is made up with of an infinite number of points that are all equidistant or the same distance away from a single point. Well, that single point, that fixed single point, is the center of the circle. And that fixed distance from the center of the circle is called the radius of the circle. So no matter where I draw a radius, that is going to be a fixed distance. All of these radii are the same distance away from the center of the circle. So we've picked up another reason and proof. Our reason and proof are all radii of a circle are congruent and of a circle is important. A lot of guys like to shorten that to all radii are congruent, but that's not true. All radii are not congruent. There are small circles that have smaller radiuses or radii, and we have big circles, okay, that have a longer radius. So radii of a circle are congruent, but all radii are not congruent, so be careful. I will not give you full credit if you just say all radii are congruent. 
We'll also work with some formulas with circles. You should be familiar with the formula for the area of a circle. Area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. So we square the radius and multiply by pi. Okay? And pi is approximated by the number 3.14, or what I would recommend you use the pi key on your calculator. So area, pi times radius squared, and circumference. Circumference is 2 pi r, or diameter times pi, where d is the diameter. Okay, and the diameter is a rate, is a really a cord that extends through the center of the circle. So a diameter goes all the way through the center of the circle from one side to the other. So from here, now we will move on to a sample problem and we'll see the kind of thing that you'll be practicing. Here's our sample problem for our introduction to CPCTC and circle. So we've got this proof. We're given circle O, and that's what this symbol means. This is circle with center O. So that O, we know that's the center of our circle. So circle with center point O. And we are given that angle T is complementary to angle MOT. And angle S is complementary to angle POS. And we want to prove MO it congruent, MO is congruent to PO. So we want to get that segment congruent to that segment. So let's take a look at our proof. We'll start with circle O that's given. And what we probably are going to want to do here is first prove these triangle congruent. So I've got circle O. Uh, from that, I know, of course, that radii of a circle are congruent. That's what we saw in this new section. So we can say OT is congruent to OS because radii of a circle are congruent. And then I also know that angle MOT is congruent to angle POS. So MOT is congruent to POS. I mark my diagram for this, the radii as well. So we know that is their vertical angle. Angle MOT is congruent to angle. POS because the vertical angles are congruent. Okay? Now I've got angle T is, is complementary to MOT and S is complementary to POS. Well, MOT and POS are congruent from our previous step. So we have complements of congruent angles. So now I know that angle T is congruent to angle S because complements of congruent angles are congruent. So I've got this business here, and if I take a look at my diagram, I can see that I have angle side angle. Hello. And we have company. Hello. Good night. So, a special guest this evening. So, we have complements of congruent angles congru are congruent. And then we look at our diagram, and as I mentioned, we have angle, side, angle. So, let's go ahead and write our congruent triangles. And we've got to be careful with our correspondence. So, triangle... T O M is congruent to which triangle? 
Well, angle P corresponds to angle S. Angle O corresponds to itself. And then uh, OS can correspond to OT. So and triangle POM corresponds to triangle SOE. So we got to make sure we have the correct correspondence. And that, of course, is angle side angle. And our steps that led up to that were step two, three, and five. And if you want, you could write three, two, and five. Um, so we have angle, side, angle, three, two, and five. But we want to get MO congruent to PO. Well, MO and PO are sides of our triangle. So MO is congruent to PO because once we have the triangles congruent, then we know all the remaining corresponding parts are congruent. So we can use CP, C, P, C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So there's an example of how we use our information with circles. And we've also incorporated CP, C, P, C into our proof. So we'll do more practice with this when I see you in class.